गुड मॉर्निंग क्लास इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट किरचोफ्स लॉज देर वर टू लॉज ऑफ किरचोफ्स वन ऑफ देम वॉज किरचोफ्स करंट लॉ ऑल्सो नोन एज के सी एल और करंट जंक्शन लॉ एंड अदर वन वॉज किरचोफ्स वोल्टेज लॉ ऑल्सो नोन एज के वी एल और लूप लॉ वी हैव ब्रीफली डिस्कस हाउ टू अप्लाई दीज लॉज इन एन इलेक्ट्रिक सर्किट एंड ऑल्सो वी हैव डन सम एग्जाम्पल्स आई हैव गिवन ए क्वेश्चन टू यू मे बी यू हैव ऑलरेडी सोल्व दैट Uh, so you can send me the answer, or if you have any doubt in that question, you can tell me in the comment section. All right. So uh, also one uh, thing that we have uh, discussed in the last lecture that was Kirchhoff's law uh, comes from some conservation law, and uh, already we have discussed that Kirchhoff's first law comes from conservation of charge. In the same way, Kirchhoff's uh, one can ask you that. from where or from which conservation law the kirchhoff second law is formed or which conservation law does it follow so <clears throat> today we are going to discuss about this that kirchhoff second law follows which law which conservation law and uh, then we will proceed for the applications of kirchhoff's law uh, also uh, one of the application we have already discussed that kirchhoff's law uh, used to <coughs> solve the complicated resistance resistive circuits or capacitive circuit or inductive circuit okay that was one of the application another application was in experimental physics and uh, uh, we will proceed in that so in this process today we are going to study about beach stone bridge then on the basis of that principle we are going to discuss about meter bridge and potentiometer that are most important topic of your this unit current electricity so today topic will be of beach stone bridge but before that we are going to discuss about conservation law okay <coughs> before starting that let me show you one example that is based on kirchhoff second law we have already discussed that let we have a resistance r1 another resistance r2 and we have a source of emf that is a cell suppose the potential of cell is v <coughs> sorry as the circuit is closed you know that the current flows from higher potential to lower potential now i am going to apply kirchhoff's law this is one of the simplest example we have already discussed that i am going to tell you that which conservation law does this law follow uh, by using this example all right so this is positive potential this is negative potential current is flowing that way so current flow always flows from higher potential to lower potential that means if current is flowing that way this will be higher potential and this will be lower potential also current direction is the same and current is flowing in that way that means this is higher potential and this is lower potential as you already know the steps followed all right so now the second step what was it we have to make a loop either clockwise or anti clockwise so um, always try to move in the direction of current so i am going to start from here and i am going to loop in like that all right so <coughs> let's apply kirchhoff's law what does it say in a closed loop the sum of all the emfs and the potential drops is equal to zero algebraic sum of all right and uh, we have already discussed the sign convention how to take potential drop negative and how to take it positive if we go from higher potential to lower potential we have to take it negative and if we go from lower to high then something is added low to high so we have to uh, add it if we go from high to low that is positive to negative then you have to take a negative sign and if we go from negative to positive then you have to take positive sign all right we have already discussed that in last lecture now <coughs> let's start let's apply kirchhoff second law applying kirchhoff's second law or you can simply say kvl kirchhoff's voltage law so we are going we are starting from this positive potential so we will put it as positive b then we are going through a connecting wire and we have already know that uh, there is no potential difference in connecting wire as the connecting wires uh, the resistance of connecting wires can be neglected as it is so small all right then we come to this point this is higher potential and this is lower potential as we know that uh, whenever a current passes through a resistance there is some resistance to the flow of charges and the battery has to do some work <clears throat> if battery has to do some work it loses some of its potential or it loses some of its energy at that resistance and that is calculated from ohm's law and if we are going to from higher to lower potential then the potential drop is negative 
all right from ohm's law we know that the potential draw will be current into that resistance i into r1 now <coughs> from this to this it's also a connecting wire and we know that connecting wire does not do any uh, potential drop then we will <coughs> come to the, that resistance another time it is from higher to lower if we go from higher to lower then we add a negative sign also the potential difference to r2 from ohm's law we know that it is i into r2 and the sum the loop closing and the sum of all those potentials will be equal to zero from here we have already discussed that v is equal to r1 plus r2 <coughs> or you can simply say that v is equal to i r1 plus i r2 this is the emf of battery this is the potential drop across first resistor this is the potential drop across second resistor what does this equation implies that the whole potential of the battery will be equal to potential drops across various resistors let me proceed further and uh, let me multiply this with some charts. <coughs> what is this indicated? Potential drop across first resistor. Let me uh, uh, denote it with V1. Plus, this is also potential drop across second resistor. Let me denote it with V2. The potential drop across R1 is V1. The potential drop across R2 is V2. I can write it uh, in that way. All right. So, this is V equal to V1 plus V2. So, what does a battery or cell do? What is its work? What does it do? It uh, continuously supplying the charges to the circuit. Alright. It has some chemical energy. It gives, uh, using that chemical energy, it rotates the electric charges through the circuit. How does it rotate? It do some work. Alright. And when that electric charge is moves, it, uh, its chemical energy is converting into electrical energy, alright? The moment of charge is forms electric energy, we all know that. So, battery using its chemical energy in moving the charges and uh, or you can say that uh, the chemical energy of the battery is converting into electrical energy of the electric circuit, alright? So, <coughs> let me uh, multiply this with Q. With the charge as the battery is moving some charges as the battery is moving some charges let that charge is q <coughs> let battery is moving some q charge in t type all right i am going to multiply this q in whole this equation as the same charge is moving to r1 and the same charge is moving to r2 that's why the current is same you can see that the, if the same charge is moving through the whole circuit then and then only the current will be same. All right. Let me multiply this. This will be Q into V. This in, will be Q into V1. This will be Q into V2. What does this indicate? You have already discussed, already learned about this in your uh, <coughs> first unit or in your 10th class also. Potential into charge. You already discussed that. What does a potential means? It is work done in moving a charge from one point to another so potential into charge gives the energy all right this is the potential energy of the battery potential energy of source source can be a cell or battery or any other all right what does this indicate potential drop across v1 into charge it is actually the loss of potential energy uh, across the resistor one what does this indicate loss of potential energy across the resistor across the resistor one and in the same way this is the loss of potential energy across the resistor r2 <coughs> so what does this this, this equation uh, actually show the potential energy of the source will be equal to uh, if you added the various losses of energy in the circuit then it will give you the total energy of the cell what does it indicate if you added the various losses happen in the electric circuit if you add them then you will get the energy of the source all right so this law is in general the law of conservation of energy so what uh, which law does Kirchhoff second law follow it does follow law of conservation of energy <coughs> let me show you one thing if this potential if this potential yeah, or you can say that q into v is less than q v1 
plus q v2 what does this indicate if this happen if you calculated the energy loss what does q v1 plus q v2 shows it shows the total energy loss in the electric circuit uh, i hope you understand that so what this equation means the energy loss is, is greater than the energy of the source the energy losses in the circuit are greater than the energy provided how can this happen this can only happen if some of the energy is created on its own if some of energy is created on its own in the electric circuit then and only then this can happen that the energy losses are greater than the energy of the source itself so uh, what does it this indicated some energy is created in the circuit what does this indicate in some energy some energy is created is not that a violation of conservation of energy yes this is the violation of conservation of energy so this equation is not valid all right also if this happened if q into v is greater than q v1 plus q v2 <coughs> so it what does it say the energy of the source is greater than the losses of the energy in the circuit this is also a violation of conservation of energy this shows that the uh, some energy is lost and we don't know in which form that is lost or uh, you can say that energy is destroyed in this process uh, a more convenient word is that energy is destroyed all right so also what does this indicate energy is destroyed energy is destroyed energy is destroyed this is also against the conservation law conservation of energy so neither you could write this equation or this equation this is uh, a correct equation that is given by kirchhoff second law so what conservation law does kirchhoff second law follow it follows conservation of energy that was the topic from uh, last class all right now we are going to discuss about the one of the application of kirchhoff's law that is wheat stone bridge principle and <coughs> then we'll we will go for the meter bridge so one of the application of kirchhoff second law is wheat stone bridge and its principle that is one of the important topic in learning the experimental physics you have various experiment in class 12 and uh, uh, in fact about four of the experiments are from this unit current electricity one of them is meter bridge or you can say that two of the experiment of meter bridge and uh, about three of the experiment from potentiometer all right uh, but uh, one can do uh, combinedly perform those experiments so uh, they uh, can be counted as three or four all right so <clears throat> let's discuss wheatstone bridge uh, first we have to discuss what a wheatstone bridge uh, please stop the video if you don't know how to apply it of second law uh, you must have knowledge of that law and how to apply that law first watch that video of it of second law and then come to this topic you must be aware how to apply kirch of second law all right let's start what does wheatstone bridge says if four resistances what does it say if four resistances p q r are combined in such a way as shown in figure all right if four resistances p q r one of them i am showing like this p in the form of a bridge that is called wheatstone bridge all right four resistances one of the resistance i am uh, saying that p is the value of resistances i am not taking r all right another resistance is uh, another resistance is q another one is r and another one is s all right <coughs> now from this point you have connected a source of emf all right like this you can give the name of these points uh, that is your choice and a galvanometer is connected in between a galvanometer detects the presence of current a galvanometer is a device like a meter which detects the presence of current or potential difference in its electric circuit all right it gives the deflection that tells you that the current is present in the circuit all right and emitter is made from the galvanometer that will be uh, uh, topics in the next uh, lectures all right uh, next unit you will going to study how to convert a galvanometer into an emitter or a voltmeter galvanometer was 
a classic device and emitter and voltmeter are used nowadays uh, <coughs> those are made from using galvanometer all right so let's start this is a wheatstone bridge this you can see these type of circuit like this uh, you can also see the also made this circuit like this i am showing you that like this this is also the form of that all right but we cannot say this as wheatstone bridge or this as wheatstone bridge until a condition happens all right uh, we are going to discuss what that condition is this what that condition is and uh, when does we say a bridge like this or like this and wheatstone bridge we are going to discuss that we are going to learn that all right <coughs> this is the same we have two resistance like in parallel one in between and this this is also a form of wheatstone bridge this is also a form of wheatstone bridge but this is just a form this is not a wheatstone bridge until a condition is satisfied and we are going to discuss that condition all right so <coughs> let's we will discuss these questions later all right i was just showing that where you did see this wheatstone bridge in your uh, problems all right so what does this law say what does this principle say if the ratio of resistances p and q is equal to r and s one uh, another thing is that the galvanometer is a device that may detects the presence of current and galvanometer also have some resistance uh, inside the galvanometer there is a rectangular coil on that coil uh, some copper wires has been wounded on it and uh, those copper wires have some length and uh, due to that length uh, copper wire also have some resistance all right so galvanometer also have some resistance and i have considered that the resistance of the galvanometer is g all right the resistance of galvanometer is g the resistance of this resistor is p that is q r and s all right so let's start what does this law say uh, when the circuit is closed some current i does for flow in this circuit all right this current will uh, distribute here in two ways a, uh, one of them in p and one of them in r some of the current will also go here some of current will also go here also go here then i current will come back <coughs> as we all know from conservation law a battery uh, how many uh, the charges that goes from the battery also comes back to it as the uh, charge is conserved charge cannot be destroyed so the current in this branch will be same if it supply i current it also gets i current back all right so there is no doubt this current is i then also this current will be i uh, whatever the distribution in between if this current is i this current will be i uh, they will combine in such a way that this current will becomes i equal to i all right <clears throat> what does this law say that if the ratio of this principle if this is not a law this is a principle all right if ratio of if what does what does this law say the ratio if the ratio of resistances p with q p by q is equal to resistances r by s if this ratio satisfy if you take the resistance of this and this and uh, give uh, find out the ratio if this ratio is equal to the ratio of r by s then then wheatstone bridge then wheatstone bridge is said to be is said to be a balanced wheatstone a balanced wheatstone bridge <coughs> so when will when will this is an unbalanced wheatstone bridge all right if the ratios are not equal this is a form of unbalanced wheatstone bridge and uh, one can ask you the condition of bal if balancing wheatstone bridge the condition is if the ratio of p by q equal to p or q is equal to r and s ratio then you will say that the wheatstone bridge is balanced all right so what does a balanced wheatstone bridge indicates in a balanced wheatstone bridge in a balanced wheatstone bridge in a balanced wheatstone bridge 
the branch which is connected in between these resistances the branch whether a galvanometer is connected or a resistance is connected whatever be the correct whatever be connected in between the current in the, that branch will be zero the current in a balanced wheatstone bridge the current in the galvanometer will be zero <coughs> the current in the branch which is connected in between will be zero whether a resistance is also connected is here whether a resistance is also connected there uh, that will be of no use as the current in the branch is zero so battery will not feel that branch the battery will not feel the load of that branch all right and uh, you can uh, visualize this thing as if the current is not flowing in this branch what does this indicate the potential of this point a and this point b must be equal the potential of point a and point b must be equal that's why the current is not flowing what was the condition of uh, flow of current that there must be a potential difference if there is no potential difference one point is not at higher and one point is not at lower potential with respect to that previous one then the current will not flow current always flow from higher to lower potential all right so current will not flow uh, as the current is not flowing that uh, only means the potential of point a and point b will be equal that means potential of point a and point b will be equal <coughs> how you will calculate the potential at that point uh, the current is flowing in that way some potential drop is happen here and some potential drop is happen here and uh, with respect to this point you can calculate the potential of that point that is an easy process you can do that using ohm's law all right but uh, one thing is sure if this condition happen the potential of those points will be equal and the current in this branch will be zero and battery will not feel the load of this uh, branch all right so in the complicated circuit whenever does you see this condition whenever does you see that uh, let me give the example another time uh, we have already discussed this one here was a resistance one resistance was here one resistance was here and this was connected like this a source of fear all right if this is 20 ohm this is 10 ohm this is uh, <coughs> 50 ohm this is 25 ohm and this is 29 ohm and you have to calculate the current in each branch then <coughs> uh, first you have to find that uh, how much current does this battery is giving for that you know ohm's law you have to apply ohm's law what does ohm's law say v is equal to i into r ohm's law is made up for the one resistance only so first you have to find the equivalent resistance of this whole circuit what you have to do you have to find the current that is that the source of emf is supplying for that you will use ohm's law what does ohm's law say v is equal to i into r it does uh, what does the condition is you have to find the equivalent resistance of this circuit and it is one of uh, uh, it is very complicated process to find the equivalent resistance in circuit like this as this is 29 ohm this will make the uh, <coughs> calculations very complicated but if you uh, look carefully that the ratio of this and this 20 by 10 is equal to ratio of this 50 by 25 that is 2 ratio 1 all right so you have uh, watched it carefully that the ratio of this this and this and this are equal so this is the condition of a balanced wheatstone base and uh, what does in a balanced wheatstone bridge indicates that the current in the in between branch that forms the bridge between two sides will be zero so the current in this branch there will be no current in this circuit the current will be zero in this branch if current will be zero you can remove this branch so this circuit will become just like this this is 20 ohm this is 10 ohm this is 50 ohm this is 25 ohm and this is uh, your battery this is 20 this is 10 this is 50 this is 25 <coughs> sorry you can solve it easily this is 20 this is 10 you can see that this these are in series so further you can change it is 
20 and 10 are in series that forms 30 ohm 50 and 25 are in series that forms 75 ohm and the circuit is changes into this now you have to solve the parallel combination of this and you can find the current all right you find the r equivalent so uh, which some bridge helps us here so you have already uh, <coughs> you have to watch the circuits carefully so can you can apply the condition of balance with stone bridge all right uh, this solves the uh, solve the solves the complicated circuit very easily all right <coughs> so let's prove this we are proving that the condition of balance uh, if the condition of balance with stone bridge satisfy then the current in this branch is zero or we can prove, uh, prove it in alternate way that if the current in the between branch is zero then the condition of balance with stone bridge p by q is equal to r by s will get proved all right okay what i will do i will put the current in this branch zero and i will prove that p by q is equal to r by s we are going to prove that all right <coughs> so proof we are going to prove the wheat stone the condition of wheat stone bridge that if the current in in between branch is zero then the ratio of these resistances will be equal and the ratio of these resistances will be equal <coughs> do you know why these ratio are equal so as the potential at these points becomes equal okay let's start proof let current into the mid branch that is in galvanometer is zero current in galvanometer is zero we are taking that all right before that let distribute the current current i is flowing here you can take any current in this branch you can take uh, let's see i1 all right this current will become apply kirchhoff first law kirchhoff junction law then this current will become i minus ka i1 some I current was flowing, some I current enter here, I1 leaves from here, what does remaining current becomes I minus I1 or you can uh, apply Kirchhoff flow here, what does this say, an I current is entering and I1 current is leaving that way, what does this current becomes, let's say this is some I dash, let's find it, what does Kirchhoff first law say, that the sum of entering current and leaving current is in at a junction is always equal to 0, so <coughs> what does um, how much current is entering i let take it positive how much current is leaving minus ka i1 leaving current is taken as negative also this is leaving this is taken as i dash the sum of these currents will be equal to zero i have to find i dash take it uh, to the right side this will become i minus i1 all right so i also write i minus i1 here you don't need to apply this you just see total i current is entering and i1 leave there how much left here i minus i1 all right if 10 ampere current enters here 2 ampere goes there how much uh, left here 8 ampere all right 10 enter 2 goes there 8 left here all right that is simple mathematics okay let's uh, <coughs> continue this i1 current goes here and i am saying that in this branch IG current is flowing. I am not taking IG zero at this point. I will take it later. Okay. I will apply this condition later. So I1 current was entering at this junction and IG current left from here. How much is there? How much left here? I1 minus IG. It is the same like this. I1 current total of I1 current enter at that junction. IG left from that I. So how much left here? I1 minus IG. Okay. So, I minus ka I1 comes here, I minus ka I1 comes here and IG current come also comes here that how much current left here. That this is I double dash, I am going to find out that how much I double dash is. <coughs> uh, let me make that I minus I1 is coming at point B, IG is coming at B and this is I double dash. I have to find the I double dash. Entering current is taken positive, that is I minus I1. This is also entering current taken positive, IG. This is leaving current taken as negative, I2. The sum of all these current at this junction will be equal to 0. If we'll, I will take I double dash in the right side, then this equation will become I double dash will be equal to sum of this and this. So, 
instead of writing this i am going to return is like this <coughs> i1 plus i0 like this okay it was also simple it i minus i1 current was entering i z was entering total of this and this enter so how much will leave the sum of this all right a 2 ampere and 3 ampere enter then how much leave 5 ampere as current is a scalar quantity it does not follow vector's laws so you can simply uh, apply the law of algebra law of scalars addition of scalars okay <coughs> you need not to do this if you can do it verbally <coughs> so let's start i already said that before applying this uh, before seeing this video you need to need to have a knowledge of kirchhoff second law and how to apply kirchhoff second law all right so uh, how to apply kirchhoff second law first step was you have to make the direction of currents then you have to mark higher and lower potential according to the direction of the current <coughs> all right current always from higher potential to lower potential you have seen that current is flowing in that way that will that must be higher potential that must be lower potential current is flowing in that way that must be higher potential that must be lower potential current is flowing in that way current is flowing in this way this must be higher potential this must be lower potential let z is the resistance of galvanometer all right current is flowing in that way this must be high this must be low flowing in that way this must be high this must be low all right <coughs> Let me also take the name of this as or as we have already taken C and D. Okay. Now what do we have here? We have two closed loops, and I am going to apply Kirchhoff's second law in both the loops, and I will solve those equations for i is equal to zero, and I will prove that p by q will be equal to r by s. That is the proof of Wheatstone bridge. All right. <coughs> Let me start uh, in the loop, in the closed loop, applying. applying kirchhoff's voltage law in cabc in cabc i am applying kirchhoff's voltage law in cabc let's start you have to start from any point and move in the loop either clockwise or anti clockwise this was the next step all right so uh, let me start uh, let me start from here from this point and uh, suppose let's start from here you can move from anywhere i have told you that let's start from negative point and let's move like this all right let's start from negative point and let's move like this you can move in either way that is your choice all right as i am starting from this negative so the potential drop across this resistance must be taken as negative so take it negative Minus. What is the potential drop across a resistor? That is the current flowing in that resistor and the resistance. Okay, uh, multiply multiplication. That is from Ohm's law. Current into resistance is the potential. So how much current is flowing in this resistor? That is I1. What is the resistance of that resistor? That is P. I1 into P. All right. You can start it from here to that is high to low. We are going this in this resistor from high to low. So that's why I have taken it negative. current into resistance then from here i will go this connecting wire the connecting wires are generally resistance is resistance less there is no potential drop <coughs> then i come here this is high potential this is low potential i am going from higher to lower potential higher to lower in going from high to low we are uh, there is some drop so we are taking it as negative <coughs> sorry uh, <clears throat> as we are going from high to low we are taking it as negative and how does we write the potential of the galvanometer the current flowing in it that is i z and the resistance of galvanometer that is taken as z then also connecting wire no potential drop then in the loop we are proceeding in this way this is negative potential this is positive potential we are going from low to high potential we are going from low to high potential so low to high we are adding something <coughs> in going from low to high we are adding something so potential will be add out what uh, how much is the potential the formula is current into resistance how much is the current in this branch that is i minus i1 what is the resistance of this r the sum of all the potential in a closed loop is zero the loop is closed loop is complete okay 
this is indicated as equation one. <coughs> in the same way, I am applying Kirchhoff voltage law in <coughs> Kirchhoff's voltage law in this loop. Applying applying Kirchhoff's voltage law in the circuit A D B A. All right, I am applying Kirchhoff's law in this. You can move in either direction that is your choice all right so how does we move let's move from this like this this is completely your choice you can move in either direction all right so we have started from the negative of this so that this the potential drop of this galvanometer is taken as negative how does a potential drop is written as it is the multiplication of the current flowing that and the resistance of that current flowing in the galvanometer is IZ and the resistance is Z capital Z then we come to this point this is higher this is lower we are going from higher to lower some drop is there so is taken as negative <coughs> how does you write the potential drop it is the multiplication of the current flowing in that branch in that resistor and the resistance of that uh, resistor current into resistor then we will go to here in the loop like this this is negative this is positive we are going from low to high some addition is there low to high so you taken you we have taken the potential as positive and uh, the formula is current into resistance current in this branch is i1 minus ig and the resistance is q will be equal to zero this is equation second <coughs> all right uh, so the knowledge of Kirchhoff's second law is must to apply to prove this which term is okay now I am applying this condition let put IZ equal to 0 in equation 1 and 2 I am putting IZ equal to 0 in both the equation so equation 1 becomes what does this equation become minus I1 into P if IZ is 0 this whole term becomes 0 so we have left here i minus i1 into may r will be equal to 0 all right <coughs> okay this can be written as i minus i1 into r will be equal to i1 into may p i have taken this to the right side what does this equation indicates what does this equation becomes if we put i z equal to 0 this whole term becomes 0 if I put I is equal to 0 here, what does this indicate? This is minus I minus I1 into my S. Alright. If we put I is equal to 0 here, this becomes I1 into Q equal to 0. <coughs> this is equation third. I am taking this to right side. Okay. This will become I minus ka I1 into S. This will be equal to I1 into Q. This is equation four. Minus to minus answer. What I am going to do here is dividing equation 3 by 4 okay what i am going to do here is dividing equation 3 by 4 if we divide these equation what does this shows there is something like this okay i minus i minus i1 into r i minus i1 into all it this divided by this this divided by this i1 to i1 cancel this to this cancel what does this indicate p by q is equal to r by s this was the weak stone bridge principle if the current flowing in the between branch is zero then the ratio of this resistance with this uh, these resistances will be equal to ratio of these resistances or you can say it in reverse if the ratio of these uh, resistances are equal then the current in the mid branch will be equal to zero <coughs> okay this was the wheatstone bridge and by using this wheatstone bridge in the next lectures we are going to discuss meter bridge and then after that we are going to discuss potentiometer that's all for today any doubts you can tell me in the comment section thank you thank you